A proposal from Senator Chandler has been received under Standing Order 75 as follows. Dear President, pursuant to Standing Order 75, I give notice that today I propose to move that, in the opinion of the Senate, the following is a matter of urgency. The need for the Australian government to take concrete action, including applying sanctions comparable to those applied by like-minded nations in response to the human rights abuses and deadly violence perpetrated by the Iranian government against its citizens and other actions of the Iranian government, including its support for Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Is the proposal supported? It is. Thank you. I understand that informal arrangements have been made to allocate specific times to each of the speakers in today's debate. With the concurrence of the Senate, I ask the clerks to set the clock accordingly and I call Senator Chandler. Thank you, President. And this is certainly a matter of urgency because people in Iran are dying every day at the Excuse hands me, Senator, of the sorry, government Senator of Iran. Chandler, could you please move the motion before you speak to it? Indeed, uh, Madam Acting Deputy President, I move the motion. Thank you. This is certainly a matter of urgency because people in Iran are dying every day at the hands of the government of Iran. Women are being killed. Children are being killed. Innocent civilians are dying. And while Iranian authorities have done their best to hide from the world what is happening by cutting off internet and access to social media, the world knows who is responsible for this. I'm sure every senator in this chamber has received countless emails and social media messages and phone calls from the Iranian community making clear that they want action, not just words, from our government. It has been more than two months since Masa Gina Amini was killed. I've been calling for urgent action by the government since the week of her death back in September. It is completely mystifying to the Iranian-Australian community why our government hasn't chosen to act sooner and faster. A fortnight ago, when the opposition asked the Prime Minister why Australia was yet to apply the same targeted sanctions that our allies have, the Prime Minister quite disgracefully chose to talk about considering the implications for businesses before acting. This is a situation where women are being beaten in the streets by their government for not covering their hair. Children are being shot and killed by the military. It is not a time to be sitting around mulling over business dealings with Iran. It is time to act. Other countries have acted and have applied multiple rounds of sanctions to Iran. This government likes to talk about acting in concert with our partners and the international community, but that is precisely the opposite of what they've done when it comes to sanctioning individuals responsible for killing women and children in Iran. Six days ago, Canada announced its fifth round of sanctions in response to the recent violence and human rights abuses. In that same time, our government has announced zero sanctions. The US has announced multiple rounds of sanctions directly in response to the current violence. So has the UK. Australia, none. These sanction notices provide long lists of individuals within the Iranian regime who our allies have identified and taken action against, along with detailed explanations of why they are being sanctioned. Yet when I ask the Foreign Minister and the Department of Foreign Affairs whether we agree with our allies that those individuals deserve to be sanctioned, all we receive in response is no comment. We can't discuss that. By the way, if you go and look at the Hansard for those foreign affairs estimates held 13 days ago, we still haven't had a transcript published. What is going on? Not only can the community not get answers from the government, they can't even access a record of official proceedings of the parliament from two weeks ago. I am pleased that yesterday the minister confirmed that government agencies tasked with countering foreign interference have been tasked to look at the threats and intimidation made to Australian critics of the Iranian regime. This is an incredibly serious matter, one that I raised in estimates myself and have subsequently raised with our eSafety Commissioner in written correspondence. 
Security and intelligence services around the world are making clear that this is a very real and very dangerous matter. MI5 has confirmed that Iran's intelligence services have made at least 10 attempts to kidnap or even kill British nationals or people based in the United Kingdom regarded by Tehran as a threat. And meanwhile, as if what they're doing to their own civilians isn't bad enough, we know that Iran is arming Russia with drones to kill Ukrainian civilians. Once again, our allies have sanctioned Iranian authorities over this, but Australia, according to the minister's answer to my questions earlier this week, has not. It is not good enough for Australia to be lagging behind our allies in responding to this human rights crisis with targeted sanctions. Iran is growing bolder every day in their violence and their threats to international peace and security. It is time for Australia to play our part in holding them to account. Thank you, Senator Chandler. Senator Sheldon. Iran. Now, it is a shame it didn't come a bit earlier, because in government they oversaw a decade of cuts to Australian diplomacy and multilateral institutions. A decade of inattention and cynicism. Those opposite were members of the UN Committee that appointed Iran, get this, appointed Iran to the Commission for the Status of Women. They could have acted when they were in government. They did nothing. They said nothing. And unfortunately, they seem to remain committed to the Scott Morrison approach of putting political point scoring ahead of the national interest in foreign policy. As said, Senator Chandler well knows, the Albanese government is committed to action on Iran. We have acted and we will continue to act. The Australian Order. government. Order. The Australian government condemns the deadly and disproportionate use of force against protesters in Iran. Following the tragic death of Mashamani, a 22-year-old Kurdish woman whose Kurdish name was Gina. We have raised our concerns regarding the brutal crackdown on protesters directly with the Iranian embassy in Canberra. The government has been alarmed by reports that hundreds of people have been killed and many more injured, including dozens of children, as a result of the heavy-handed measures Iranian authorities have implemented to crack down on ongoing protests. Australia supports the right of the Iranian people to protest peacefully and calls on the Iranian authorities to exercise restraint in response to ongoing demonstrations. As the Foreign Minister, Senator Wong, has told the Senate, we will continue to work with our international partners and continue building pressure on the regime to cease its brutal campaign against its own citizens. Now, Senator Chandler, seems to want to give people who might be the subject of sanctions as much warning as possible, which of course weakens their effect. It's an open mic night in the Liberal Party Foreign Policy Committee, and they're all competing for who can score the pettiest political point. The government won't play political Order. games. We'll continue Order. to step up. The government won't play political games. We'll continue to step up pressure on the Iranian regime. Australia stands with the Iranian women and girls in their struggle for equality and empowerment, and will continue to call on Iran to cease its oppression of women. We are committed to promoting gender equality and women's empowerment, and ending violence against women and girls worldwide. The Liberals and Nationals had their chance in government. And they did nothing. Thank you, Senator Sheldon. Senator Steelejohn. 
Thank you. Every day we wake up to more devastating news from Iran. Just today there is news of Iran's Revolutionary Guards attacking targets in neighbouring northern Iraq for a second day in a row. The airstrikes targeted bases of Kurdish separatist groups uh, in northern Iraq, according to most recent reports. Also today, Iran's football team at the World Cup have been told that they could face reprisals if they fail to sing the national anthem in their remaining World Cup group games, after a politician in the country uh, said that they will never allow anyone to insult our national anthem. Despite these chilling warnings, uh, the players stayed silent at their first game in solidarity uh, with the Iranian people protesting uh, follow, following Jinnah Amini's death. A major disruption to internet services uh, has also been reported uh, today in Iran. There have been reports of indiscriminate killings of more protesters, including children. This is all in simply one day's worth of news. The Australian government must do more. These behaviours by the Iranian regime have continued and continued. Words of condemnation are not enough. Actions must be taken. The Australian Greens remain deeply concerned about the ongoing situation in Iran and are in solidarity uh, with protesters in Iran. We will always protect the right to protest. We will always fight for people's rights to choose their dress, their partner, their religion, their career and what they want to do with their bodies. The Iranian authorities' suppression of the rights of women, of LGBTIQ plus people and other minorities, including the Bahi, must end. The Australian Greens support this urgency motion and we are again calling on the Australian Government to impose Magnitsky-style uh, sanctions and other targeted sanction measures, including financial asset freezes and the introduction of visa bans uh, for people linked to the Iranian regime, including members of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, key security officials, uh, militia personnel and, the, and members of the morality police. Now, what we have heard, in conclusion, what I will uh, observe here is that we have heard from the government an argument uh, that they, they've done enough already or that there is little more that they could do. The government of this country must engage with this issue in solidarity now. Thank you, Senator Steele. John, Senator Scar. Thank you, Madam Acting Deputy President. And I agree and endorse and associate myself with every single thing that Senator Steele John just said in this place. And I was very pleased a few weeks ago to attend a, uh, a rally with uh, the good senator, which was convened by our wonderful Burmese diaspora with respect to the human rights abuses which are occurring in, in Burma, as we are here today. Uh, this is an important issue, and our Iranian diaspora in Australia expects us to act. This place adopted Magnitsky sanctions, adopt, adopted laws which would enable them to be imposed. They need to be applied. The fact of the matter is that Western democracies around the world are moving ahead of us at a rate of knots. The death of Masa Amini uh, has been a lightning rod, an absolute lightning rod, for disaffection in Iran. It, is, it has come to symbolise the repression and violence against Iranians from its own government. And this country needs to act. We need to act. Hundreds have been killed. The journalist who actually broke the story with respect to Masa Amini, Nilafar Hamidi, has herself been arrested. She's herself been arrested after she took photographs and communicated on Twitter the reaction of Masa Amini's family to her death. She's actually herself been put in prison. This is unacceptable. The Australian government needs to act. And this should not be. This should not be about partisan politics. We should be above, above partisan politics in this regard. And in relation to Senator Sheldon's point about us broadcasting, broadcasting the names of those who should be subject to these sanctions, 
You don't need to broadcast them. Just have a look at the press statement dated 26 October 2022, issued by Anthony Blinken, Secretary of State of the United States. They actually list the people who are subject to Magnitsky-style sanctions. They're already on the public record. And I'll go through the categories, because these are the people who need to be held accountable for the atrocities and the brutalities that are occurring in Iran today. The first category, those who, and, and there are five individuals, six officials, I should say, the government of Iran, responsible or com complicit in serious human rights abuses, who hold leadership positions within Iran's prison system, including at Even Prison, and in the provinces of Sistan and Bulukstan and Kurdistan, among others. That's the first category. Category one, you can read their names. The Department the Secretary of State, Department of the Secretary of State, acted 26 October 2022. We're nearly in December. What are we waiting for? That's the first category. The second category, three individuals serving as commanders of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps who have been at the forefront of the brutality. Again, they've been identified as individuals directly responsible for the suppression of peaceful protests and arrest of peaceful protesters. That's your second category. The third category, those people associated with what's referred to as the Raven Academy, which engages in cyber security and the training of hackers, which are being used to stifle freedom of speech in Iran. That's the next category. The fourth category, the Iranian commander and chief of police in Isfahan province, who has engaged in gross violations of human rights, namely the cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment of peaceful protesters. Again, another category. The names of these people are here. They're already the subject. They're already the subject of sanctions imposed by the United States. What are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? The diaspora, the Iranian diaspora in Australia, expects us to act, and we should act in solidarity with our brothers and sisters in Iran. There is no reason not to wait. I know, I know. And I listen and respect the Minister for Foreign Affairs. I know she cares deeply about these issues. I don't, I don't suggest otherwise. But there is potentially a systemic problem here. There is a systemic problem here, in my view, in terms of Australia's response to human rights abuses, whether or not they occur in, in Myanmar, in Sudan, in Tigray, in, in Ethiopia, or in, um, or, or in this case, in Iran. And that is, we've got these sanctions on the books. The rest of the world moves, and for some reason we don't move when we should move, when there's a moral obligation to move. And that's what we should do. That's why this resolution is important. And I'm sure all senators here would agree with the sentiments behind this resolution. But we need to act in, in, to enforce human Thank rights. Thank you, Senator Scar. Senator Waters. Thanks very much, Acting Deputy President. And I rise in strong support of this motion today. And on behalf of the Australian Greens, we stand with all of the women and girls and people of Iran. They have a government that is killing them. It is unfathomable to privileged people like us here in Australia, where whilst our democracy has problems, we're essentially safe from being shot at by our own government. This is a just extremely deeply distressing issue, and I appreciate that the foreign minister has um, made some representations to the ambassador and, and made some appropriate remarks by Twitter a month or so ago. But it is not enough. It's not enough. If you if you feel it, and I think you do, you've just got to follow through with some actions, as has been said by many of the previous contributors. Most of the world has already done this. It's not like we're daring to go out on a limb and lead here, which wouldn't be such a problem if we were. But everybody else has already imposed sanctions. They're already taking really strong actions and sending a really strong message that it is not acceptable to tell people, to tell women what they can or cannot wear. And it's certainly not acceptable to arrest people and then kill them because they haven't got the headscarf on properly or the pants are too tight. It is inconceivable that our government is not doing more to stop this sort of treatment um, of uh, people in another nation. There are so many things that could be done. My colleague and many of the other speakers have gone through the Magnitsky-style sanctions that could be employed. But frankly, we should also be declaring the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps a terrorist organisation. We should be immediately moving to withdraw the Iranian regime from the commission of the status of women. These are concrete 
measures that could and should be taken by the Australian government and that we would not be alone in taking um, around the world. I was so proud to stand at a Brisbane rally and a massive shout out to the strong Brisbane Iranian community who are holding successive rallies, as I'm sure is happening right around the country. These people are strong and determined. They deserve safety in their own country and they deserve a government that they've got the right to vote for and vote out. I hope that this strength and resilience and sheer bravery and courage of the women and girls and people of Iran will ultimately lead to a democratic system for them. And I want the Australian government to do everything it can to send that message that we are with you. That is what we want for you too. And you get to make your own decisions about your own lives and your own government. Um, I don't think that's too much to ask. So again, I was so proud and privileged to stand with those Brisbane folk. And um, I've got a beautiful little plaque now that says Women, Life, Freedom that I've put with pride in my parliamentary office that reminds us of the job we have to do here to stand up for the rights of women, girls and people everywhere, not just in our own nation. Thank you, Senator Waters. Senator David Pocock. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. I thank Senator Chandler for moving this. Uh, it is indeed a matter of public importance. It's been almost 70 days since Mas Amini was murdered. We continue to hear news of shocking developments, including the beating and killing of teenage girls in school raids orchestrated by Iranian security services. This regime is clearly very willing to escalate its violent oppression of the women and girls who refuse to be silenced in their ever louder calls for freedom. I am in awe of the courage and bravery of Iranians for standing up against this regime's draconian laws. They are risking imprisonment, they are risking death. Over 300 people have been killed since the protests began, including more than 40 children. The regime apparently believes these protests are an existential threat to their grip on power. And I believe it's beyond time to move from soft diplomacy with a regime such as this to targeted sanctions. In recent weeks, I've had the privilege of attending protests here in Canberra, standing alongside the Iranian Australian community and others in our community. While these crimes may be happening thousands of kilometres away, our local community is feeling the pain closely. I want to thank everyone who has written to me, called my office or come to Parliament House to keep this issue front and centre. I hear you and I stand with you. We hear you and, and stand with you. I have written to uh, Minister Wong twice, calling on the government to apply targeted sanctions on Iranian officials. I applaud Minister Wong's willingness to speak in support of the Iranian people, but clearly now it's time for more action from the government. Thank you, Senator Pocock. Senator Shoebridge. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. I want to associate myself with the contributions that have been made by those senators across the political divide calling for action today. The wave of protests in Iran following the death of 22-year-old Gina Masa Amini, now two and a bit months long, continue. In the last week alone, 72 people have been killed in the brutal repression of protests. This takes the total number of people killed to at least 416 more than 50 children. Thousands upon thousands more have been arrested, and now the regime is threatening to execute those protesters. The UN has described the situation as critical. All of this is part of that ongoing brutal crackdown against protests and dissent. Largely young people, the future of Iran, who are calling for basic human rights we take for granted, democracy and freedom. And their rallying cry is women, life, freedom. The crackdown has been particularly severe in the Kurdish areas of Iran. Martial law has also been imposed in Mahabad. Convoys of armed forces are moving towards cities of Iranian, of Iranian Kurdistan, and some of the deadliest violence has been directed against other minorities, including the Baloghi community. We cannot let the Iranian government use this as an opportunity for further genocide. What has been clearest throughout these recent months is the bravery of the people of Iran, and we've seen that on the streets and out the, side of, out the front of this parliament. Their staunch, unwavering courage in the face of terror and brutality. Their solidarity of Iranians who are rallying and protesting in the diaspora. Enormous solidarity is powerful, inspiring and important, and we're saying today we hear you. I watched as the Iranian soccer team stood silent while the anthem played at the World Cup. It gave me chills. 
We have watched videos of women removing their scarves, cutting their hair, walking bravely towards security forces, and they want us to stand up and act. The people of Iran are stepping up, and we need to stand with them. And that means immediate and comprehensive Magnitsky sanctions against that awful regime, targeting the criminal leadership, not the people of Iran. It means taking the action this parliament and the powers this parliament gave the government to act. It Thank means you, Senator solidarity. Shubich. Senator Van. Thank you, Madam Acting Deputy President. Right now, in, in every single day in Iran, the basic freedom and rights of the Iranian people are being violated. And every day that the Albanese government does nothing and, and refuses to take a stand is another day that more innocent lives are lost. Authoritarian regimes around the world are taking the lives of innocent people. We see this clearly in Ukraine, we see it in China, and we're seeing it writ large in Iran. We cannot allow these authoritarian regimes to ignore the international rules-based order. The, det the detainee diplomacy undertaken by the Iranian regime when it jailed Dr Kylie Moore Gilbert for uh, around three years was just one symbol of the despicable acts of this regime and its complete disregard for the principles of law and the principles of human rights, including freedom of speech. Countries like Canada are leading the world in standing up for women's rights by sanctioning Iran. Canada's me measures prohibit dealings with the several individuals and entities, effectively freezing any assets they may hold in Canada and banning them from the country. Australia needs to follow this lead. We need to stand up for the people of Iran with everything that we can do, and we can do more because at the moment this government is not doing anything but talking. Australia needs to follow in the footsteps of like-minded countries like Canada, the US and the UK and impose Magnitsky style sanctions on Iran and its regime. This should include financial asset freezes and travel bans against members of the Re Revolutionary Guard, the uh, morality police and other key officials as well as sanctions and, and financial sanctions against the government. We now can take these actions due to the coalition's government signing into law the Autonomous Sanctions Amendment, Magnitsky Style and Other Thematic Sanctions Act 2021, which we did in December last year. The coalition has made it clear to, to the government that we will provide bipartisan support for Australia to do the same. Statecraft is a responsibility of government, and sanctions are a tool of statecraft. The government is doing nothing. We hear lots of rhetoric from the table. We hear the media, see the media performances. Still nothing is, being, is happening. The government said, and we heard this in estimates the other week, that, only, that the uh, charge d'affaires, the deputy head of mission of the Iranian embassy, had been called in by a first assistant secretary of DFAT. Why hasn't the foreign minister called in the, the DHOM? Why has it been left to a lowly official in DFAT? Surely we can send a stronger signal than that. The Iranian community in Australia is calling loudly for the Australian government to do more. They are outraged that nothing has been done, completely outraged. I've spoken at, I think, now about four rallies in Melbourne and here in Canberra, and the amount of sadness, the horror they're witnessing back home, the anger that they're feeling that nothing is happening here is palpable, and yet this government ignores them. We need to be able to stand up for the people of Iran we need to be able to show that we care about human rights, about the rights of women and children, and not to stand by idly while people are being shot in the street for exercising a right that we would 
fight for here in Australia. This government is all words and no action, and I call on the Albanese government to do more, to bring in sanctions, to stand up for the people of Iran. The coalition government brought in sanctions against the Russians after the invasion. We did it within days, and we had the support of the opposition. We are giving you our support to do the same against the Iranian regime. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Van. The question is that the motion moved by Senator Chandler be agreed to. All of that opinion say aye. aye. Those against say no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Um, I've already. Do you want it re-put? Uh, okay, I will re-put the question. The question is that the motion moved by Senator Chandler be agreed to. All of those of that opinion say aye. 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 Those against say no. Aye. I think the ayes have it. Aye. Division required. Division required. Ring the bell for four minutes.
the ayes have it, so the division is cancelled. The ayes have it. Senator Scar, yeah. Senator Scar. Acting Deputy President, I was just perhaps seeking some clarification for Hansard as to how the division was cancelled. Senator Pratt, uh, I understand it was cancelled at the request of the Labor Party. President, I'm happy to put that on the record now. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Senator Urquhart, you have the call. Madam Deputy President, um, the previous matter of urgency in the name of Senator Chandler, it was called for the ayes. I incorrectly advised my deputy whip to call a division, and that was incorrect. That's why the division was cancelled. Senator Scar. Uh, we've had the explanation. There's no point of. Well, I had actually given Senator Scar the call before you. So, Senator Scar. Uh, perhaps, um, Madam Acting Deputy President, if if we could ask for some clarification, with I understand Senator Urquhart's explanation with respect to cancellation of the division, but the Hansard record will say that there were no's stated in the chamber before the division was called, those no's did come from the government benches. So I think uh, it would be useful to know if the clarification is those no's were unintended or were they intended? Senator Yang. Hanson Young, do you want to restate your point of order? Thank you, uh, Madam Acting Deputy President. I too would like clarification as to who the no's voiced in the chamber were or indeed what the government's position is. Senator Urquhart, I'll give you the opportunity if you feel you need to clarify the position. I've actually outlined that I, call, I gave the wrong advice to the Deputy Whip in terms of the um, position of calling the division, and I've clarified the incorrectness of my decision. Senator Scar. Uh, thank you, Madam Acting Deputy President. For the record, then, can I just uh, make it clear that there were no no's coming from the opposition benches? Thank you. Senator Hanson Young. Thank, thank you, Madam Acting Deputy President. I would also like to make it clear there were no no's coming from the Greens benches in relation to that motion. Thank you. Uh, we shall now move on to the consideration of documents on page four of the order of business today.